Hello and welcome to Matthias's Rust Corner. Today we'll be talking about how to handle endiness in Rust and when it is an issue we need to consider. Then we'll take a look at the built-in functionality provided by the language. And lastly, we'll explore how the popular zero copy crate can help us with this problem. Before we get started, I just wanted to let you know I have a GitHub repository associated with this video series. It contains examples and some exercises you can play with to explore the concepts we talk about on your own. Let's go! First, let's quickly recap what NDNS is and why it could be a problem. As we all know, computers process numbers in terms of bits and bytes. One byte is 8 bits, and numbers consist of one or more bytes. For instance, a 32-bit integer is represented by 4 bytes, and a 64-bit integer is 8 bytes. We usually use base 16 or hexadecimal numbers to represent byte values. As an example, the unsigned 16-bit hex representation of 1042 is 0, 04 and 12. The first byte in hex literal, 0, 04, is the most significant byte as it contributes the most to the size of the number. The second byte, 12, is the least significant since it has the lower value contribution. In a perfect world, all machine architectures would represent numbers in the same way. But unfortunately, there are actually two standards for representing numbers, Big Endian and Little Endian. In Big Endian representation, the most significant byte is stored as the first byte. In the example above, that means if you read the first 8 bits of the number from its binary representation, you would read the hex value 04. The next 8 bits would then be the second most significant byte, in this case 12. This means the number is stored as we represent it in both binary and hex writing. It reads left to right. With little endian, however, as you may have guessed, this is turned upside down. The least significant byte comes first, so in the example above, 12 is the first 8 bits. Then the next 8 bits is the second least significant, etc. etc. Most hardware today represent numbers using little endian, but far from all. To make matters worse, the byte order used when transferring data over networks is big endian. There may also be cases where you need to interact with hardware devices with a conflicting endianness or binary file formats shared between different platforms. Low level protocols, such as TCP IP, use big endian or network byte order, as per RFC 1700. However, you are of course free to declare the endianness of your protocol as long as it is known to all participants. For instance, Protobuf uses little endian representation of numbers. This means that whenever we are writing code that will interact with the network or data coming from other systems, we must take endianness into consideration as programmers to ensure compatibility. In practice, this means converting the incoming representation to our platform's native representation. To do this conversion, we need to know three things. The endianness the number is stored as, as we receive it, our machine's endianness, and the size of the number. Luckily, we can access our target's endianness at compile time. That leaves us with having to know the format in which the number is stored and the size of the number. Once we know that we have to do a conversion, it's just a simple matter of reversing the bytes. So, how do we do such a conversion in practice? Luckily, the standard number types in Rust provide methods to convert them from and to the different byte representations. All built-in numeric types provide the following four method types for making those conversions. Two little big or native bytes, which makes a U8 array of the number, from little big or native bytes, which converts an array of bytes into the number type, and finally, to and from little big or native, which returns self but with the altered byte order representation. Note that the NE functions use our build target's native representation and as such are not very useful when used for compatibility purposes. This is because we normally want to convert from a known representation, such as network byte order, to our platform's native type. Here you see an example of using from LE bytes to convert the little endian representation of 1042 to the U32 representation on our platform. Similarly, here is the conversion from big endian bytes to our U32. Chances are, if you need to perform these conversions, you have somehow received a buffer of bytes. Let's say we received the network byte order representation of this C struct via the network. When receiving this, 
we have two options. We could directly deserialize each field, but we rarely want to eagerly do this until we need to access the values. Let's instead make a view onto our buffer for accessing the fields of the data. As you can see, we construct the view by simply taking reference to its underlying data and verifying its length. We then access the fields on demand using the getter and setter methods, each time correctly converting to and from the underlying big endian representation. This approach is fine, but it can be tedious to write such views by hand for every type we use in our application. Luckily, the zero copy crate can help us with this. Zero copy, as the name suggests, is a crate primarily made to facilitate zero copy semantics in Rust. It's made by Google, and their slogan is We write unsafe so you don't have to. What is zero copy, you ask? Well, it's a broad topic, but it refers to practices where you process data in a high performance environment and wish to avoid copying and accessing it as much as possible. The reasons for doing this can be complex and need a video by itself, but the techniques deployed for doing it involves simply forwarding pointers to our data and dereferencing only selected parts of it and only when strictly needed by our application. Luckily, the zero copy crates provides traits, function and derives to do this safely. Incidentally, the cases where we need to use zero copy semantics are also cases where we have to think about endianness, primarily when receiving data over the network or interfacing with binary file formats. For the purpose of discussing endianness, the crate provides wrapper numeric types on the form of capital I32, capital U16, etc. These types are provided for big endian, little endian, and network endian, and provide get and set methods returning and accepting their corresponding native number type. The zero copy numeric types have an alignment of one. Here, we see how to construct an I16 with a big endian representation and how to convert it into its byte representation. By itself, this doesn't seem a lot more useful than simply using the built-in types as functions. The usefulness of the zero copy numeric types become evident when we use them as struct fields. In this struct, we mix two number representations, an i16 using network endian representation and an i32 using little endian. The from bytes and try from bytes derived traits allow us to create a view of a chunk of memory as if it is a reference to the type of our struct. Here, we see that using this data array, we can read and change the underlying byte representation using the interface of the struct. The observant viewer may notice something strange in our data array. Pause the video and leave a comment if you spotted the problem. For the rest of you, due to alignment rules, the size of the struct should be 8 bytes, where the i16 is padded with 2 bytes to make sure the i32 is aligned to 4. However, since the zero copy numeric types have an alignment of 1, the size of our struct is 6 bytes. This is essentially the same as using wrapper C packed as opposed to just wrapper C as we can see here. You can watch my video on Rust struct memory layouts to learn more about alignment. To summarize, when we are dealing with binary data from the network or other systems, we need to take endianness into consideration. The standard Rust numeric types provide methods to convert to and from big and little endian representations. The zero copy crate provides traits and types to make interacting with binary data easier and safer. And finally, when we are processing binary data in a high performance environment, we should use zero copy semantics. That's it for today. Make sure to like the video and subscribe to get notified about further Rust content. Also, check out the companion Git repository for examples and exercises related to these videos. Goodbye.